Hello, everybody. It's Brother Dan Colon from First Bible Church, my beautiful daughter Madison. Uh, we're going to be singing some hymns for you this morning uh, before the message, and we hope we could be a blessing to you. The first song we're going to sing is uh, from, from our hymnal on page 492. It says, Jesus loves even me. And the Bible says that Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. He didn't deserve to die. The Bible says, uh, For God hath made Jesus to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus Christ. And the Bible also says in the Gospel of John, chapter, chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him jesus christ should not perish but have everlasting life in heaven and that is true love that god would give his his only begotten son to die in your place in my place for our sins he became sin for us and he didn't know any sin also in the book of jeremiah god says the lord hath appeared on the Bible says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. God loves you this morning. Sometimes you may not feel like it, but God loves you. So here we go. You ready? We're going to sing it a cappella. Uh, we don't have no instruments with us to play. and We don't know how to play instruments anyway. So we're going to give it a try. All right, so... I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms will I flee, when I remember that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great King, this shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Well, even if it didn't sound good down here, God, it sounded good to the Lord. Uh, page 126. Page 126. Can you turn there? I don't have this. Right here. Page 126. In Psalm chapter 62. John, Psalms chapter 62, verse 2, it says, He only is my rock. And my salvation, he is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is the rock of our salvation. He is the rock of ages. Also in Psalm chapter two, chapter 92. Oh, I found my glasses. <laughs> Psalm chapter 92, verse 15. To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Jesus Christ is the rock of our salvation. And we are going to sing that great old hymn, Rock of Ages. You ready? Let's give it another try. All right. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. 
Save from wrath and make me pure. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no longer know? These for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, and behold thee on thy throne, rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. The last, the last stanza here, it says, while I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, one day it's going to happen. Your heart's going to stop beating. You're going to draw that last breath. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, things aren't going to end up too good for you. The Bible talks about a place called hell, and hell is real. But praise God, heaven is real, and God made it easy to get to heaven. And if you're saved, like the next verse says, When I rise to worlds unknown, and behold thee on thy throne, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Jesus Christ is the rock of ages. And if you have Jesus Christ, when you draw that last, that last breath, you're going to stand before his presence. He's going to grab you into his arms and love you. And all your problems will be over. Are you saved today? I don't mean being a good boy and keeping the commandments. I mean, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? When you die, when you draw that fleeting breath, are you going to a literal, visible place where God is, where Jesus is, and all your troubles are over? There's nothing like knowing for sure you go to heaven when you die. And I have that. We have that assurance. Amen. Praise God, my daughter's saved. She grew up in a Christian home. She got saved at an early age. But we say this out of confidence in God's Word, the Scriptures, God's Word, the Bible. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. God preserved His Word. In Psalm chapter 12, verse 6 and 7, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Amen. Uh, by the authority and the promises of God's word, the Bible says, In hope of eternal life, from whom God, which cannot lie, promised before the world began. God promised us. In fact, we're going to sing about that. Our next song is going to be 175, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the Promises. That verse I just quoted is in the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 2. It says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, God promised us eternal life. And also in Galatians chapter 3, verse 22, the Bible says, But the scripture hath concluded, all under sin, all have sinned, the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one, the Bible says. All under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. God promised us. If you put your complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he promised us that we have eternal life. That promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. And the last verse is in 1 John chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 25, it says, And this is the promise 
that he promised us even eternal life. Even eternal life. What are you going to live here? 80, 90, 100 years? My grandfather made it to 99. And that was a good old age. What's 100 years compared to 1,000 years? Compared to 10,000 years? Mm -hmm. You know, people that died, that loved the Lord Jesus Christ, that are saved, that died 200 years ago, guess where they are right now? They're in heaven. Amen. They will spend eternity in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. But the people who died without Christ 200 years ago, they're still in hell. They're still burning. Their problems were never over. A lot of people want to say when they die, their problems are over. If you're not saved, sometimes your problems are just beginning. So here we go. We're going we're gonna to sing Standing on the Promises. Hmm. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises sing. Glory in the highest I will about shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to Him the Spirit's words, <laughs> bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. One more time. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening to every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. We're going to try that third one again. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. See, what this is an organized religion. This is unorganized, him, him singing. But we have fun doing it. And you know what? It's, it's nice singing about God's promises, standing on the promises of God. That yeah. third one where I jump down to, to another stanza, it says, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord. We talked about God's love. God so loved the world. Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. The Bible says the Word of God is like a sword. Standing on the promises of God. God gave us some precious promises. And I'm going to talk about that next in, uh, when, we preach, when I preach the message. But thank you for being patient with the father-daughter <laughs> team here. But it was, it was fun anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, all right. All right. Praise the Lord.
Hello everybody, it's Brother Dan Colon from First Bible Church, New Jersey. It's that time of uh, that time of month I get to share something from God's Word, the Bible. Good old King James Bible. It's God's Word because we're a Bible-believing church. It's not, uh, it's not my opinion that matters. It's what God says. So I like to just share what God says this morning or this afternoon whenever you're watching this video. And uh, by the way, I'm hoping, uh, well, we're hoping, the church is hoping that we could get into the nursing home soon and uh, so we can see each other face to face. Anyway, so uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what I say. It's what God says. And God says that the Bible's right. Everybody else is wrong. He says, I'm right. And the Bible's right. He says he, he put this book here for us, for our learning, for our knowledge, so we can know the mind of Christ. We can know God's mind. We can know what God's will is for us in, in our lives. You know, the Bible says that Jesus said in Matthew 24, 35, it says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. You know, uh, so this book is eternal. There's two eternal things in life. It's the souls of men. Everybody has a soul and the word of God. That's going to last forever and ever. It says, heaven and earth shall pass away. My word shall not pass away. Uh, in Psalm chapter 12, verse 6, six and 7, the Bible says, uh, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times, purified, purification. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. That's Psalm chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. See, and it doesn't matter whether you believe it, or I believe it, it doesn't change the fact that it's God's word and it's truth. Whether you want to believe it or not, God says something, it's going to happen. It has happened. I mean, the book's never been, this book's never been proven wrong. Think about it for hundreds of years. This book, I'm sure however old you are, since you're a baby, you know about the Bible. If you've lived in America, praise God. God has blessed America because of that. Because we used to hold this book dear to us. And it was important, this book, at one time in this country. And that's when God blessed this country. But little by little, this country, this country that, 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 that promotes sin, that, that glorifies sin and has parades for sin and doesn't want God. They want God when they need something. But other than that... They don't want to hear about God. They they've taken them take them away from them, taking them out of schools, out of a out of a courthouse, out of a. They've uh, this country is in a state of apostasy. This whole world is that we have turned our back on God. But, but like I say, it doesn't matter because the God's word is truth. You can try to ignore it, but deep down inside, you know it's the truth. So. Before I get started, a little word of prayer. I'm going to be preaching something out of Luke chapter 15. Uh, but before we do that, I'm just going to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, that name above all names. I love you, Lord. And I pray, Father, that uh, your word could be a blessing to us this morning, this day, Lord. And uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, you are a great God and a great Savior. And thank you for loving us so much, Father. And I pray that... Uh, you would bless this message in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. So, I'd like to uh, share something from the book of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. <clears throat> and that chapter 15, verse 3, it says, And he spake this parable unto them, saying, Now this is Jesus talking. It says, what man of you having a hundred, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And what, and when he hath found it, laying it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. And praise God, I'd like to thank the Lord for being a great shepherd. You know, the Bible likens us to as, as sheep. And the reason why is because from what I've gathered, I, I'm no expert on it, but they say sheep are just dumb and they need a shepherd. And God likens to us like sheep who need a shepherd. 
And that great shepherd is Jesus Christ. And it says, what man of you, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness? Aren't you glad that God left heaven? That God left heaven to come down and save you, to come down and save mankind from hell, that you don't have to go to hell? You know, uh, it's the Bible said, the, the Bible likens us to sheep. And I, I've always wondered, I says, well, why, well, not that I've always wondered, but I said, why not, why not a dog or a cat or something good? Because I, I like dogs. I mean, I'd rather be like a a dog. I, I think dogs, I think God made dogs just for men. I mean, I think it's all about children and dogs <laughs> and, and, and family. But you know what? Because sheep are dumb. And the word of God likens us to sheep. Uh, have you ever wondered why dogs have never been uh, never been mentioned? Uh, it's it's always sheep. Why sheep? Because sheep are dumb. That's about it. I've never done a big study on sheep. One thing I know is that they wander and they cannot find their way back without a shepherd. I mean, you've heard stories about dogs. People go on camp and they leave their dogs uh, at a campsite or whatever, and they come home and oh, we left Fido at the campsite or we, or we left them at the rest stop. Six months later, Fido's at the front porch just waiting to come in. Dogs will find their way back. I, I And I love dogs. I have two of them. And I let them out the backyard. And they know where they got it good. So they always come back. And they know where, where the house is. And they know where the warmth and the comfort is. So they, they, they don't go too far. Uh, cats, I have a cat too. My cat, he, he doesn't even want to go outside. He just stays in the house. Uh, and I've had cats growing up that we let them outside and they, they would disappear for days, sometimes weeks. And we think, what happened to the cat? I don't know. He's not. And then he'd show up. But, you know, it, it's, but sheep, from what I understand, they don't find their way back from anywhere. I, I, from, my, from what I've learned, my son-in-law is a third generation farmer and uh, he tells me some stories. And, you know, and he says, that, he says, that a, a, a sheep sheep could be 50 feet away from the barn and they still don't get it to go into the barn. They have to be herded into the barn. They have to be pushed into the barn and they need help guiding them back. And just like we need help, we need help from our shepherd, our great shepherd, Jesus Christ. And if you notice in our text, it says uh, that that Jesus Christ, he left, he left, his, he left the splendor of heaven to come into this old sinful world. He was in his father's presence and yet he still came down to this old sinful world he left he came to seek that which was lost the bible says so god became a man and he came to seek you know to seek and save that was lost and i'm sure glad i have a savior that seeks sinners because the bible says there's none righteous no not one that we're all sinners all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and i'm glad that jesus christ seeks sinners and whom I am chief, just like the Apostle Paul said that he's chief. I think I'm the chiefest of sinners, but God is so good and God forgives us because we, we have a savior. We have that shepherd, that great shepherd. <clears throat> and we have that savior that seeks sinners. And I'm glad he stepped out of heaven and he came. He came, he, le he left his father's house to come see us, to, to come redeem us. And in verse five over here, it says, uh, and when he hath found it, he lay it on his shoulders, rejoicing. He's so happy when he finds a, a, a when, when, he, when, when a sinner gets saved, the angels of heaven are rejoicing. As we read in verse uh, verse seven, it says, "I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance." So there's joy in heaven when a sinner gets saved, when a sinner accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, their great shepherd. And uh, another thing my son was telling me, uh, I asked him, I says, do sheep ever, like, if they disappear or something, do they, do they have a special call? And he says, yes, it's called bleeding. Bleeding is when a sheep starts calling in distress. Uh, he says, and, and, and if a sheep is lost, the shepherd, the shepherd looks for him. So just like Jesus Christ is seeking after us, the shepherd, Jesus Christ, the great shepherd is seeking, he's looking for us, but we need to call upon him. Just like a sheep has that certain call called bleeding, and we need to call upon the Lord. The Bible says in uh, Acts, in the book of Acts, it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
you know, uh, you need to call upon God. You need to to call on that great on 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 that that great shepherd, and he'll come and he'll find you. And I called out to that great shepherd Jesus Christ when I was found. I was I called out January seventh, nineteen eighty eight. I was lost, and I called out to Jesus Christ, that great shepherd. He found me and he saved me. And if he saved me, and look at the text, it says, and we had and when he had found it, when Jesus Christ found me. He layeth it upon his shoulders, rejoicing. Now, you know what? When you get saved, Jesus Christ comes and lays you on his shoulders. And you know what? He says, cast all your burdens on me because I cares for you, because he cares for you. You know what? You can lay everything on Jesus Christ. No matter what, I got that great shepherd, that great savior that's going to carry me home. And you could have that great shepherd too. And he's rejoicing. Jesus, God loves you so much today. God loves you so much. He doesn't want you to die and go to hell. He wants to spend eternity with you in heaven. Are you saved? When I say are you saved, that's a Bible term that we use. Saved from hell. Saved from the wrath of God. I mean, are you saved? That when you die, you go into a literal, visible place where God is, where Jesus is, and all your troubles are over? That's being saved. That's calling out to the Lord and to, to God, to Jesus Christ. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And in Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, let me read this one. 2, 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you saved? You got to make that call. Us dumb sheep, us dumb Dumb sheep, we need to call out to that shepherd so he could hear us and he'll come find us and then he'll put us on his shoulders. He'll protect us. He'll protect us. Let's look at the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 10. This is Jesus talking. Ah, this is such a good, this is such a good, chapter. Jesus Christ says, I am, uh, verse 11, chapter 10, verse 11, the gospel of John. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, in other words, someone who, who works there is in the real shepherd because the devil is not a real shepherd. He's the false shepherd. He's the antichrist. He's again. He's the op he's the opposite. But boy, he tries to imitate imitate God. He tries to imitate Jesus. But is uh, he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. And you know what Jesus said? I am the good shepherd and know my sheep, and I am known of mine. And Jesus Christ knows you. If you're his sheep, he knows you. And in verse 27, he says, And my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Do you know Jesus Christ? Do you follow him? How do you follow him? You follow him through his word. He says, I, and, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Woo! Eternal life, never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and, the, I and my Father are one. Woo! Praise God! That great shepherd hears our voice, and he knows us, and, he, and, and, and we follow him, and we're never going to perish. Nobody can do anything. The devil can't take you away once you're saved. Once Jesus Christ is your great shepherd and your savior, once you accept him, the devil cannot take your soul. He could beat you up, boy, while you're here on earth. He could beat you up. I mean, give, you know, God will allow him, you know, to beat you up a little bit, but he, he, you're fixed for eternity if you're saved. And if you're saved, boy, there's so much more. There's so much to look forward to. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, is it 4? And then it's 2 Corinthians. Oh, 1 Corinthians 2 9. 1 Corinthians 2 9. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. 
neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. We can't comprehend. There's nothing we, we've seen in our lifetime. And I, I mean, I think I've seen some beautiful country. Me and my daughter, we went cross country this year. We were 4,000 miles to New Mexico and back. And I said, wow, this country is beautiful. There's so many beautiful things. God says, there's nothing that you can see that will look like that will compare to heaven. There's nothing There's nothing that you could hear, like a, the sweet sound of a baby uh, laughing. That's a sweet sound. Well, God says the sound, your, your eyes, your ears, you can't comprehend how good it's going to be, the things that I have prepared for them that love me. Oh, boy, I love Jesus Christ. Oh, I love him so much. He's my great shepherd, my savior. I mean... What a savior, what a savior. He didn't have to die. He didn't have to die for your sins. All your sins were laid upon Jesus Christ. All my sins were laid upon Jesus Christ. The Bible says he hath, God hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin. Jesus never sinned, once, never sinned once, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, uh, the book of Acts, it says, Neither, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't come down to start a religion. He didn't come out of heaven and leave just like the shepherd, the, the shepherd, the good shepherd that left and 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 sought out that that lamb that was lost. Jesus Christ stepped out of heaven. That's a picture of him. That's a picture of Jesus Christ coming out of heaven. Looking for sinners. He's seeking for sinners. Are you a sinner? Of course you're a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. And the Bible says in Romans, it says, for the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The payment of our sin is death. Going to hell. Separation from God for eternity. But the rest of that verse says, but... The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see, it's only through Jesus Christ. It's not through religion. It's through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. So, I'm going to end there. And I just want to thank you for listening. I hope you paid attention. I hope it was a blessing to you. It was a blessing talking about my great shepherd, about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it, it was it was it was a blessing for me to share it. I hope it was a blessing for you. And we're gonna give a little word of prayer now. We're gonna end in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we love you today, Lord. Thank you for for leaving. Thank you for leaving heaven and seeking for sinners. Thank you for looking for me. And thank you, Lord, that I called out and you heard me and you found me, Lord. Thank you, Father, for saving me. And I pray, Lord, Father, that this message might have been a blessing to you, most importantly, and to the hearers, Lord. May you receive the honor and glory. I pray someone will get saved through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. So until next time, God bless.